Hi everybody. Uh, it's me, Shalia. Um, so it's been a long time since I made a video, and I'm really sorry for all that. Um, been really busy trying to catch up with school after my hospital stay. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, as you can tell, I'm still sick, and they don't know what's wrong with me. Um, they think it might be chronic bronchitis, but um, I haven't had chronic bronchitis since I was really young and uh, was subjected to living in a house full of cats, and uh, at the time I was highly allergic to cats. I don't have cats. <laughs> and... Um, Knoxville, Tennessee is known for its high pollen rate and pollen count, and it's this big bowl-shaped valley, and so there's a lot of pollen in the air, but I take my allergy medicine regularly, and I don't have any symptoms, so I'm kind of confused as to why I've been sick for so long uh, consistently. I have been through a round of three different antibiotics um, for bronchitis, and um, I'm on my second round of steroids, uh, prednisone, and um, the only thing I'm noticing is that I have more energy, but I'm still struggling to breathe. Like, I feel like I have to talk really fast in order to get what I want to say out. Uh, <coughs> Because otherwise, I just start coughing when I take a deep breath. So I take really shallow breaths, and I talk really fast so that I don't end up coughing. I'm still a little congested. Um, I haven't really talked about what has happened since being discharged from the hospital, obviously because I haven't really been on except for once um, since my discharge, but um, I was still having uh, auditory hallucinations, and um, I came to the realization uh, relatively quickly that the auditory hallucinations were my grandfather, who's been dead for, I'd say, eight years, and the reason why I think it's his voice uh, is because I was abused by him, both uh, sexually and physically abused by him, and um, that abuse went on under my mom's nose, and it was brought to our attention when my sister um, finally told her that stuff was happening. And, um, like, I, I don't really recall anything other than, you know, waking up frequently without any clothes on whenever he was over at our house. And I don't take my clothes off in my sleep, so I don't know what was going on. Um, but I, I have the assumption that I was sexually molested and possibly raped in my sleep. By my grandfather, um, <coughs> because um, you know all the symptoms of when you first have intercourse. You know there's supposed to be like spotting or something. I never had that. Um, I didn't have my period until I was about 13, 14, and I've always been a late bloomer. So late that. Um, I didn't even really develop physically into a woman, I would say, until my 20s, and, um, uh, that's a whole different ball of wax, but, um, there are three, three possible reasons for my consistently being sick. One is that I have asthma, which runs in my family. Two would be an autoimmune deficiency or disease, um, which just means that your immune system is um, just weak and uh, will not be able to fight off infections or diseases. 
and uh, three is cancer. So I've already had two of those. Uh, I've already battled with um, potentially having asthma uh, before with having the chronic bronchitis and they ruled out the asthma and um, the cancer part. Um, I've had cysts on my ovaries and I've had cysts on my cervix and um, they were frozen and removed and <coughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I never really had any backlash from that. I've pretty much been healthy. Um, my body doesn't deal with stress well, and when I get stressed, I get really sick, and when I get really sick, I get really stressed. So, mentally and physically, I am rot <laughs> and raw, but, um, I'm still trying to catch up with school. Um, I've made contingencies with my teachers and in two of my classes that I, I think I might need contingencies plans with. Um, my English professor um, uh, has uh, potentially given me the okay for an incomplete in his class. Uh, meaning that as soon as I complete all the work that's required of the course and turn it into him, he will give me a grade um, at that appointed time, uh, which would be at the beginning of the spring semester. So I have up until then to get all my work into him, which is great because, like, being this sick you and not being able to breathe, I will tell you, makes you really delirious. And, like, you don't want to do anything. Like, the simplest task of getting up in the morning to move, to go to the bathroom, or brush your teeth, or take a shower, or anything, just really is not appealing. Showers are great, um, but they're only, you can only be in there for so long with the hot water on before you run out of hot water and then you're cold. <clears throat> and I don't have time for all of that. Um, I really wish that they knew what was wrong with me. They're, they're supposed to, in um, the next coming week, um, like after ne next week, they I have an appointment to go in and see my doctor who has not seen me physically um, the last two times I've gone into the clinic to be seen and treated uh, for bronchitis um, because he's been with other patients. So he's made it a point to see me and I hope that he's made it a point to run some blood tests and some other kinds of tests to find out what's going on because I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy with being sick and uh, I'm sick of being sick without knowing why. <clears throat> um, like my throat just constantly mucus. It's, yeah. Everything tastes like mucus. It sucks. So uh, Nothing tastes good. I don't... Like, I've talked to you before about not feeling hungry. Yeah, I really don't feel hungry. And I really get sick off of eating food because it all tastes the same. And, um... Yeah. Vomiting's no good either. Um... I just, I really hope and pray that it's not anything serious, but uh, whatever the outcome is, it's going to be life-altering, um, because with asthma, you've got loads of medications that you have to be on to prevent an attack and to battle with an attack, 
and to just deal with every day. And I know this because my mom has asthma and so does my sister. Um, and actually one of my good friends. And it really holds you back because depending on how severe your asthma is will depend on how dilapidated you might feel as a person. Um, autoimmune disease uh, means that I would have to be extra precautious about being around people who are in, infected or carrying germs, um, like my son, who happens to be a germ factory, and um, other students at school uh, until I'm out of school, and then I'll be a teacher. <laughs> I'm just going to be exposed to more germs. <coughs> Boy, did I pick a great profession to go into and, and be like this. Um, and the third, cancer. Um, like I said, I've, I've been down that road before. It wasn't that serious. Um, but I've seen the serious side of it. My dad uh, passed away of lymphoma. And I watched him slowly deteriorate. Um, and, and morph from the person he once was to something completely different. And it's really life changing to see that, let alone uh, go through that. So, um, either way, at least I won't have to worry about like losing my hair if I have cancer because <laughs> my head's covered. <laughs> Nobody would know. <laughs> Uh, I'm just making light of a bad situation. Um, I, I made that joke with one of the students uh, in my English class. <coughs> because it, it really, like, you can't help what's going to happen. Uh, you can only plan for what's going to happen. And... Uh, I've planned as best I can to ensure that my family is taken care of. I don't, I don't know what else to do uh, other than what I have done and what I have continued to do. Um, so. I'm not hallucinating anymore which is good. Not having nightmares anymore, which is good. But like um my my mind wanders to different things and I get very insightful about uh people what's going on with them, and I'm very intuitive right now, and, um, I don't know, maybe I'm making headway <laughs> in the evolution of human beings, um, but I don't know, I think that whatever Allah or God has planned for me, I will be able to tackle it, and, like, I'll, I'll admit this, like, since being sick, it's been really hard for me to pray, like, because I, I can't make do. like, I, I, I can't get the water to go up my nose, like, the perform, to perform a proper do. You have to, you know, wash your hands three times, wash your mouth three times, wash your nose three times, which means you have to inhale water. And I can't, it's all mucus, it's not, or, <laughs> it's not, it, yeah, it's snot, <laughs> um, but I can't get the water to go up my nose, so I don't. I feel like I can't do a proper wood do, so I can't really pray, but I might do it. Um, 
and I, I try I'm really hard to focus on, on living a more godly life. Um, the biggest thing that I have struggles with is uh, when I get mad, my language, oh, my language goes. Um, I have a hold on my record at school uh, because I missed an appointment with uh, my VA voc rehab advisor, counselor, person, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I missed it for a good reason. I was in the hospital. Um, and I didn't know that I would have to make up that visit. Um, I remember seeing an email from her about where all my veterans, but I never saw anything stating, like, you can follow up with me any day, just come in. Never saw that email. There was never such email. So I thought everything was okay. And come to find out, there's a hold on my record. And uh, hopefully it'll be lifted uh, over this weekend because I need to register for classes <laughs> like so bad uh, because this the spring semester is my last semester at community college and then I get my associates, which will be awesome, right? Uh, I'll be the first out of my three out of the three of my mother's children. Uh, to have any sort of degree, and I feel that it's a very pivotal move in my life because nobody can take that away and say that it's not worth anything because it is worth something, um, and I think that it'll show that I have um, a lot of drive and a lot of intelligence and um, I plan on working over the summer, so maybe I'll get like a management position because I have experience in management skills because of when I was in the military. I used to schedule people for various things like rifle range, um, PFTs, which are physical fitness tests. Uh, I would have to sign up the entire shop and uh, slate a date and a time for that and slate dates and times for people to go to the rifle range, people to do MCMAP training, which is the martial arts training for Marines, and um, make sure everybody got weighed in and stuff like that, and schedule people for deployments, like help set them up for deployments and stuff. So I have some managerial skills and clerical skills from um, being in the military, um, because after I had shoulder surgery, uh, I had very, very limited mobility. And, um, so I was asked to work at a desk, um, and that's what I did. And I did that until I was medically retired. So there's that. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about? <laughs> like, we talked about me being sick, both mentally and physically. We talked about um, school, which I'm very excited that my teachers are kind of with me instead of against me. Um, and it's only two classes that I feel like I'm really going to have to be like, I need the incomplete and I'll get back to you rather than all four of my classes because uh, I'm doing really well in the other two. Um, the two that I requested incompletes possibly for are my English class, which is reading and writing intensive and when you're delusional or um, hallucinating or tired and sick can't read. Um, you can't read. You can't write. Your brain is just not activated that way. And um, so it's very hard. 
Um, but I am taking speech and geology, and I record my lectures for geology, and I go to all the classes, so I get to see and hear everything, and that's some of the best ways that I learn, um, is by hearing and seeing things, um, and, uh, doing things hands-on, which is wonderful in the lab class, because I am excellent at lab class. I'll tell you what, I am getting an A in lab class. Um, but <laughs> speech, I'm getting an A in, because I'm just a really good public speaker. Um, obviously, <laughs> you can tell on YouTube, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who's afraid to talk to themselves, let alone to however many people are out there. And I think that the more, the smaller my audience is, uh, the less comfortable I feel. Like, um, like if it was just one person, uh, subscribing or watching my channel or watching these videos, um, I would probably be a little, uh, nervous because I would be like, who is this person and why are they watching me? What do they want to know? <laughs> like, why? Why one person out of, like, all of these people that exist on Earth, you know? Like, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> like, I would think that's a stalker. But, um, because it's multiple people, I don't feel so awkward. Um, I don't, I don't even look at how many people are subscribed, but I do look at how many people watch, um, and the reason why I look at that is because I want to see, like, what it is that I'm saying or doing that you really find interesting, and I found that the more I talk about myself and my illness and what's going on with me and the insight that I have about that, the more you seem to watch like, the more of you watch, and it's, it's really strange, and it's, um, like, and, and I'll tell you, the, the ones that have the highest number of views are the ones where I cry, where I get really emotional, and, um, I don't like to cry, <laughs> like, I'm talking about possibly having cancer, and I'm not crying, and, um, I should be crying because that means that my son will have to watch me change and watch me be weak and be childlike um, in the sense of how delicate a child is, um, how frail they are, and how breakable they, they appear to be. Um, luckily, children aren't breakable. They are resilient and bounce back from anything. Um, but as you get older, not so much. <coughs> um, I will tell you that no matter what the outcome is, I will let you all know. Because I think that's important. Uh, I don't want any of you to think that I am dead, lying in the gutter somewhere. <laughs> uh, I want to keep you informed. Um, I would really appreciate it if you kept me informed as to what you would like me to talk about. Because it's really hard being the, being the center of attention and coming up with things to talk about. <laughs> And I don't do this for attention. I do this to be informative. Um, and, you know, I've given the speech about being bipolar. And I've given the speech about stress and anxiety and how they go hand in hand. And <coughs> how it's a real problem. And this channel, these videos are basically like... A window into a life of a person who does suffer from those things and whether something else comes into play or not 
is just an added feature. Um, like, people who suffer from bipolar disorder come from various walks of life and can come with many other illnesses involved. Um, I don't, I don't think that, you know, any person out there goes through life and never gets sick and never has a bad day and never, um, thinks about, well, what if I wasn't here? Like everybody goes through that at some point, at some point in your life, you have thought about it. And I want to know what it is you want to know, like about me or about bipolar disorder or about whatever else comes up. Uh, heck, about my religion that I've just uh, newly reverted to. Um, I don't care. I'm a very open person. And um, I just, I feel that you guys who watch these videos deserve more out of me. And I wish, oh, how I wish. I wish that I was healthier and could give you more of my time. That this could be my job to inform people about this disorder that affects millions of people. Like 5.7 million people. And you can find that statistic on Statistic Brain. Uh, if you look up bipolar disorder, 5.7 million people are affected by bipolar disorder. And a lot of them are misdiagnosed. So if you know somebody who's diagnosed something else, it could be bipolar disorder in reality. So just so we clarify, I was a mix. I was a misdiagnosis. So I was diagnosed with MDD, which is major depressive disorder, but they failed to acknowledge the fact that I was up for weeks at a time before I checked myself into the hospital. So, hmm. um, and I told them that, and I guess that just slipped right on past them and, uh, left, left the arena because... I was just weepy and upset and suicidal um, the majority of the time that I was there and not sleeping. So, uh, <laughs> like, I was on lethal doses of medications and not sleeping. Um, so I think that, you know, they needed to get their ex together. They sent me home on 13 different medications so I was taking 13 different things at one time and that's what I left the military with you know and I can play like everything's okay I'm really good at playing normal ask my husband um, but when when stuff really hits the fan and I'm boiling over, it's horrible. Like, I am just a wreck. But, um, like, it's a constant balance act, you know, of of trying to walk a tightrope and not fall off. And the reason why you're trying not to fall off is because there's nothing there to catch you. And, you know, I've had my counselor say, well, what, do you, like, what would you consider it net? Like, your medications? Some people might say that. Medications are definitely a security blanket. Um, but they don't prevent everything from happening, like, because otherwise you'd just be a walking zombie, and that's not a way to live. 
so I don't do that. Um, oh, and by the way, the reason why I'm not on all 13 of those pills is because I tried to kill myself with them, and so my ex-fiance, who is now my husband, um, made me get rid of all those meds. <coughs> So I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> and when I signed up with the VA, they put me on two medications instead of 13 because they diagnosed me as bipolar. Thank you. Um, and uh, put me on two medications instead of like the plethora of crap they had me on before, which really wasn't working because if it was, I wouldn't have tried to kill myself. Or maybe I would have. It was a really rough time. Uh, the person who I considered my best friend tried to kill herself in front of me. And uh, I saved her life and then she turned around and said it was my fault that she tried to commit suicide. How that happens, I have no idea. And my husband who was my fiance at the time, broke up with me. So, and I was living with him and his parents in his parents' house. So I felt really awkward and out of place and didn't know what to do. So I wanted to die. And I tried and he walked in in the middle of me swallowing a whole bunch of pills. And he took the pills from me and he flushed them down the toilet. And yeah, it was just a mess. <laughs> like, it would have, it would have been a different life, huh? Different kind of world at that point. Had I succeeded, I would not be here. So, I'm really thankful that he stopped me and that he walked in. But at the same time, like, Maybe he would have been happier. Because it didn't seem like he was happy with me if he broke up with me. <laughs> or maybe, maybe he felt like he needed to teach me a lesson. It was just bad timing. But um, the reason he broke up with me, which, again, very valid, um, because I had cheated on him in the past. I was talking to a guy. I was just talking to a guy, and the guy was interested in me um, more than just platonic, and I was just being platonic, and he had a kid, and we'd talk about our kids, and that was it, you know, we'd say hi, how are you, how's your day, and we'd ask each other how each other's kids were doing, how their Christmas was, stuff like that. Um, well, my husband, fiance at the time, found out that I was doing that after he had told me to stop it, and that was his reasoning for breaking up with me, because he saw that as a deliberate act of defiance, and... I don't want to say that he did it because he wanted to rule me. I think he did it because he wanted to protect me because those kinds of people can lead into some very bad situations. Like, um, like if we had met in person, would he have tried to drug me and have his way with me, you know, those kinds of things. And so I, I figured out later that that's probably why he was so scared and um, decided to break up with me at that time because he didn't want me to cheat on him again and he wanted me to be safe and that... I should take his feelings into account when making friends with people. Um, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know his real um, reasoning. 
I never really delved too deep into it. <laughs> but we got back together. Like, we broke up. What was it? A year after we got engaged. Like, to the day. A year after we got engaged. Got back together in March of the 2000. Uh, 12, and got married in May of 2013? No. It was 2011, March, we got back together. Got married in May of 2012. Been married for a year since May 2013. And we'll be married for two years in May of 2014. So, <sighs> dates and times get lost in here. Um, but, anyway, I don't have anything more really to talk about. And I'm just sitting here coughing a lot. And feeling rather nauseous, so... I'm going to change clothes and go lay down and try and take a nap, which is, like, impossible for a person who is bipolar sometimes because, like, I literally am a ball of energy when I'm awake. Like, you wake me up, I'm awake, and I don't sleep until I take my nighttime medication. And that knocks me out. And... I sleep for a good eight hours, so, <laughs> and I dream, <laughs> I apparently have dreams about Minecraft, my husband says, but, <laughs> but I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I've, I've never, never had a Minecraft dream that I can recall, so, I think he's just pulling my chain, maybe he's just getting a laugh out of me. But I know I do dream. I have some crazy dreams sometimes, like movies. Like, dreams that are like movies, where I'm not even in it. And I'm just, like, sitting, like, eating my popcorn, kind of, like, watching this whole scene unfold. It's really cool. Um, but I think that's, I think that's a perk of, of my imaginations. <laughs> I have a very vivid imagination. So when I have nightmares, they're very vivid too. But when I have good dreams, good dreams, they're really good dreams. So until next time, please leave a comment. Please like, share, subscribe, please. Um, because the more, the more this information gets out there or shared with other people or to let somebody else know that they're not alone with this disorder or feeling the way they feel, regardless if they have this disorder or not, to let them know that the feelings that they have aren't just their own. There are other people who have them. Like, have them see this video. Have them write a comment. Like, send me a message. I have an inbox uh, for my channel. And, um, there's, like, links to my Facebook page. There's links to my email address. Like, you can send me an email privately, and I will respond to you privately. Um, I don't care. Um, I am an open book, and I will share my knowledge. So please, once again, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all soon.